Good evening. I agree with a lot of the things that uh, Mr. Morin did. Uh, I'm, I was part of the big bad wolf that uh, caused some of these problems. And I, uh, uh, I agree, many of the problems that have come to light since 2007, 2008 are not uh, recent problems. Speculation is something that wasn't discovered in 2007, 2008. Uh, it's something that's been around uh, for many years. Keynes in his uh, work of 1936, uh, uh, the theory of employment, inflation and uh, money, he compared uh, things to a beauty contest. It's very interesting to see how he describes things because that's exactly the way things work in on the market floor on a day-to-day -day basis when you're a trader. Let me explain to you why. Keynes talks about a beauty uh, contest. There was a London newspaper that organized a beauty contest where out of a hundred uh, beautiful women, you had to choose the six uh, most attractive. And the winner of the contest was the uh, person uh, whose choice was closest to the consensus. People ended up uh, not choosing uh, which uh, the, the girl that they thought was the most attractive, but by thinking about what others uh, would think. They uh, chose their ranking based on their imagination of what others would do. And the same thing happens in the world of finance. People don't look about the, f the fundamentals. They think about what others probably would do. And that leads to a lot of error, a lot of uh, stupidity, and a lot of volatility. Uh, in uh, the financial markets. We saw that uh, recently in the Greek debt crisis. Uh, with any uh, uh, announcement, sentence, pronouncement, the market would go up or down, which uh, is something that obviously is completely irrational or deconnected from reality. And I think that is what is driving the financial markets. They are completely disconnected from reality. Uh, uh, today, the CAC 40 in France or the any index does, has no reflection of the real value of businesses themselves. Mr. Morin uh, said uh, there are uh, practices that have been developed through the financialization of our economy, derivatives, uh, and the volume of these trades have increased exponentially uh, over the last decade. The subprime crisis is... Uh, an example of this, and it explain, explains in some ways uh, the way in which um, the market floors work. What was the subprime crisis all about? Uh, people were saying, okay, Americans want to buy a house, they take out a mortgage, and the uh, bank uh, securitized those mortgages and sold it as a package to other uh, other. Uh, or, uh, organization. These were re-securitized, re-packaged, re-securitized. So at the end of the day, uh, people didn't know uh, what there was anymore. Uh, to the and the problem is that when one of the uh, when one of the uh, operators in that chain goes down, all the rest of them fall down. That was the for subprime crisis. Uh, what does this tell us? This talked about what Ricardo describes as moral contingency. Uh, an operator seeks to maximize profits, uh, profit, a bank will lend at a rate without asking uh, whether uh, the uh, person can pay uh, the loan back and will get rid of uh, that debt by selling it on in a securitized form. Moral contingency is about maximizing individual uh, uh, profits to the detriment of the collective. And these principles in the way in which people uh, invest in, in stocks and shares, not uh, by looking at the fundamentals, but by thinking about how uh, other people will react, which is uh, completely disconnected uh, from reality. And this issue of moral contingency has led us into uh, something which is a bubble. Uh, our previous speaker mentioned a bubble, and this bubble continues to, to blow up and grow. Uh, earlier, I was asked 
whether speculation is over. Uh, no, speculation continues, and it's been going on for many years, and it will continue to, to carry on. I'm fairly pessimistic, pessimistic because I still uh, bump into traders who uh, in the streets, traders who work on the market floor, and who said, nothing's changed. Uh, we're just uh, a bit more care careful uh, when the regulator comes by. But as the regulator doesn't really get it, we keep on going. And the problem is that the products are increasingly complex and the regulator really doesn't get it. I will not make any friends saying this, but at the time when I was a, tr uh, a trader, when the regulator, the AMF, came by, we, we used to chuckle to ourselves because uh, the regulators and even our own bosses didn't understand what we were doing. The system is like that these days. It's increasingly complex, increasingly uh, opaque, so that people from the outside uh, find it completely arid, find it completely uh, uninteresting. Uh, we don't take uh, any interest because they're still making money until it all blows up in our faces, like in the subprime crisis. Uh, I was asked uh, earlier what are the alternatives. Uh, uh, we're here to talk about fr crowdfunding, for example. I, I've seen a few figures during the 2007 uh, uh, crisis, or the crisis from 2007 onwards, there have been some accommodating uh, monetary policies put in place by the Fed, by the ECB and other central banks, which have had the effect of making available to banks uh, five times uh, more, uh, more funding from 800 billion to 4000 billion uh, dollars per year the idea was to to boost the economic uh, recovery what's been used to has it boosted the economy no it's born it's bought debt it's uh, bought uh, commodities commodity prices have gone up uh, that affects you because uh, your products are built with mm, commodities and raw materials. Uh, our products are uh, are more expensive uh, because these everything becomes uh, more expensive because this is made available by central banks. So uh, it hasn't served to help the real uh, economy for two reasons. Uh, the first reason, according to my, is because there was very little uh, demand for credit, and on the other hand, uh, the banks uh, on uh, have tightened their credit conditions because the new regulations required them to uh, have more capital on their balance sheets for their loans. So there are a lot of small and medium-sized projects which weren't able to be funded uh, that were turned down by uh, banks. So when we come to talk about crowdfunding, I think it's a very interesting initiative because all of these small projects can find uh, uh, projects through uh, find finance through this alternative participative system, which beyond uh, the uh, aspect which, from my point of view, is very uh, socially interesting because it creates connections between people, but it also provides a way to get around to avoid the conventional banking system which is not doing its job because of its uh, focus on profitability and so, uh, most of all the desire not to lose uh, money on a payment default so this form uh, of funding might be uh, a new approach for some project a, a way to fund and uh, relaunch innovation in some projects i hear a lot of people saying to me uh, typically, uh, my uh, company uh, has had a lot of problems because our credit line was stopped overnight. Uh, 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 the loan was w withdrawn overnight. I've heard uh, business people telling me that. And these uh, business people could perhaps have uh, find, found solutions through uh, crowdfunding. And their businesses might still exist today. This alternative crowdfunding, participative finance is a good thing, but the problem with it is oversight, legislation, the way it's, which it's structured. I'm not a specialist in crowdfunding. I find it's a brilliant idea, but I'm not a specialist. I imagine, because it's a good idea, 
that uh, one day or another the banks will uh, home in and will want to bring in uh, to their structures crowdfunding subsidiaries uh, the organizations that work well. I imagine the system is going to work well and I think the banks will develop their own subsidiaries in order to offer uh, you uh, as savers with savings in your account the opportunity to, to invest in, in participatory projects or other uh, kind of crowdfunding initiatives. When I thought through all of that uh, earlier on and I imagine this Imagine the scenario in which banks started to do crowdfunding. I started to uh, have a fear. The fear is that they will do uh, what the, I described earlier, that they s securitize these projects, they repackage it, sell it on, and we get a new subprime uh, crisis. Uh, from my point of view, I think this is uh, a real trap. I'm not here to give anyone any lessons. Uh, uh, the founder of Kiss Kiss Bank Bank uh, may contradict me in what I say. Uh, he's he's going to speak in a few minutes, but I hope that uh, we will manage to avoid this risk uh, because we're here in a Euro Mediterranean uh, encounter. I see crowdfunding as a tool for emancipation and uh, liberty. Uh, when you uh, have the institutions and the banks uh, which hold uh, today's world that pull all the strings because of their networks, because of their uh, lobbies, and they sometimes want to pre prevent certain projects from being uh, implemented. Crowdfunding could be a way around that. Mr. Morin said uh, that our banks uh, lead the world. Yes, it's true. The world leaders today are Goldman Sachs. When Goldman Sachs take a position, they will uh, take the market where they want to go. In the subprimes, uh, we knew that they were selling them for a while, and uh, they were selling them on to, to to clients, to other banks, to their own uh, retail clients, because they knew that these products were falling and they were worthless. The Goldman Sachs uh, dictate what goes on. And the problem for me, uh, the challenge in any case of crowdfunding will be to regulate it and not to fall into the traps of the conventional classic uh, banking system. Thank you very much. La recherche est en cours.